Hi everyone, Happy New Year and welcome back. My name is Nicole and in today's video we are looking at 2022 trends that you're going to be seeing everywhere this year. So a lot of these we started to see gain some traction in 2021, but they're definitely going to be something that's going to be popping up all over your Instagram. You're going to be seeing them in your local stores. And maybe these are things that you want to participate in. Maybe they're not. That's totally fine. Some people are very against trends. We want to make sure that our homes always reflect who we are and make us happy. So whether you decide these are things you want to follow or you don't, it's still good to know what you're going to be seeing, what's out there. And again, maybe it's something fun that you want to participate in, maybe in a small way, maybe in a big way. Now what's tricky about trends is that they go in and out very, very quickly. Some of them have a lot of staying power and we see them throughout the years. Others come and go and you don't want to be stuck with something for a long time if it's already dating your home, you know, six months to a year later. So these are also things that I want to talk about where you can participate in the trends, but how to do that in kind of smaller ways that are going to go into your decor style as they already are. And also that way they're easy to switch out if you do get sick of them and you want something different. But what are these trends we're going to be seeing in 2022? Let's jump in. That first one is sculptural furniture. So we've really seen a lot of those kind of rectangles and squares dominating for the past, it seems like forever, but a number of years. So now we're starting to see that soften a little bit. We're looking at curves in our furniture. That curved sofa is something that you're seeing all over the place. Now I have some feelings on that. I don't find it to be very practical. I don't know how you sit down and relax on it, but if you do like these kind of curved kind of sculptural pieces, there are a number of ways you can do this that make a little bit more sense. I still feel like you want to be able to relax in your own home, but smaller ways you can keep this in that don't completely disrupt your decor style. And again, just allow you to have a little bit of fun with it. So there are a lot of these very cool sculptural chairs, either these nice big lounge chairs or these kind of smaller dining chairs. You can also find this in something like a coffee table or maybe a side table, something again a little bit smaller that still lets you have a little bit more of that softened curve. You'll see these popping up in vases, in lamps. This is going to be absolutely everywhere. So the good thing about that is that you might come across something small that you like that maybe isn't something you would have thought of right away, but is again, very easy to bring home, put in your decor style, and that way you're, you know, having a little bit of fun with the trend without going completely overboard. Number two, color is coming back in a big way. So we've seen a lot of the neutrals throughout, you know, again, a long time now, just like we did with those kind of rectangles and squares from the last one. So we've seen that all white kitchen, we've seen, you know, the, the gray phase and now beige was coming back a little bit more and you'll still see more of those warmer neutral tones but people are getting a little tired of that and they want to bring that color back into your life. Now, while I don't suggest going for those larger pieces, I think that having that neutral color palette background is always going to be helpful. One, again, trends come and go, so you don't want to fully invest in one only to have to turn around and invest in something else, or maybe you've gotten rid of everything and now that's coming back. So there's a lot of reasons to hold on to that kind of more neutral canvas that you can then add that color into. One of the easiest ways here is going to be with your art. This is somewhere that you can add any and every color that you like. It's something that's easy. You have a lot of these kind of printable arts, either from Etsy or something like Decenio. You can do a lot of artwork yourself and get that hung up. I would suggest putting it in a frame first. It just kind of completes that look. Or again, go for something like your throw pillows, your throw blankets, any type of face or any other decor items something smaller that you can switch in and out as your mood changes, as the seasons change, and again, as these trends change. Now we can't talk color without talking about one in particular, and that is green. 2022 is definitely the year of green. We are looking at you know anywhere from you know, Sherwin-Williams and Bayer and Benjamin Moore having their paint of the year colors be some shade of green, but this kind of muted sage in particular seems to be something that is going to be very prevalent. Now painting your whole house green, probably not the way you want to go, but again, there are some fun ways that you can kind of play with this. If you are looking at paint, I would suggest something like your powder room or a smaller bedroom maybe, just so you can have a you know smaller area, you can test it out, see if you like it. Powder rooms tend to be something that you can have a little bit more fun with and go a little bit crazy, and it's not going to be overwhelming to change it later when you do want to. Or 
this kind of darker green, this more neutral green is also something that would go great for you know, your bedroom. There's just a lot of different places that can work. I would just, again, suggest not throwing it all over all of your walls. Have these little spaces to start, see if you like it. And again, don't commit to something if you're not quite sure it's for you. One of the big reasons that green is coming back so hard is that people are tired of being indoors all day. We're still kind of in that weird, we're kind of back, we're kind of not, we're working from home, we're in the home a lot. So people are getting a little sick of just seeing the indoors all day, every day. So nature is going to be another thing that is going to be really big this year, bringing nature into the home. Now, whether that is plants, maybe faux plants, depending on you know the lighting, how much sunlight you actually get, or if you're able to keep a plant alive, that's always something you could do. But again, these kind of greens mixed with browns, we have a lot of wood tones coming back as well, really just speaks to nature again and people just wanting to have that connection again. So with this, it's also something as simple as keeping your blinds open, you know, getting a lighter curtain, if that's something you have, those heavy drapes, maybe you wanna go more towards a sheer, more towards a linen to let in some more of that natural light. So it's not just with the plant life and the greens, it's also just about life itself. So letting in that light is something that can really help see this trend, but in a very accessible and easy way. So speaking of being in the home a lot, I think when you know the pandemic started and everybody started being in their home more and more, it just seemed like it was this very temporary solution. For a couple of years in now, I think a lot of us are still probably working from home. That's kind of moved us from, this is a temporary situation where maybe I can just set up my laptop on the kitchen table and that's fine, towards, okay, maybe I work this way now all the time. Maybe it's still going to be a while. So this kind of leads to that reemergence of the home office. A lot of us are kind of in maybe a kind of stranger corner space, or again, maybe we're just set up at the kitchen table, the dining room table, the kitchen counter, and we need something a little bit more permanent, a little bit more comfortable. If we're going to continue to do this, if maybe your work has decided that remote work is actually okay and the way to go, you want somewhere a little bit more sectioned off from your everyday life. So we talked a little bit about people being tired of being indoors, seeing the same things in their home all day, every day. Sectioning off your workspace from your life space is also something that's going to help. So we're seeing people really want that more permanent home office type space. So this can be something as simple as really setting up that desk area. Maybe it is still in a more common space, but having just something with a little bit more permanence to it can just really help us feel that that space is for work and we can section it off nicely. Maybe you do have a spare bedroom that can be turned into that office. Maybe you don't really use your dining room and that can be switched out. You can, a little bit more expensive, install something like French doors so that you have that kind of closed off section, but it's still letting in a little bit of light. Not quite as limiting as if you had that full door, but making sure you do have that space for work is something that will be important if you know that's something that your work is going to continue to do. Side note, anybody else remember in the 90s when we called it the computer room? It was never the office, it was the computer room. It just kind of brings me back a little bit. Um, comment below if you remember that too. Now, kind of along the same lines, we're also looking at people, you know, the open concept has been so dominant for so long and now we're here every day and maybe you are, you know, working from your kitchen counter and you can see into your living room and you can see into your dining room. People are getting a little bit tired of being so open all the time. Now, the closed concept is not coming back entirely. I don't want to say that it's completely sectioned off the way it used to be, but people are starting to put some walls back up. Now, while that is an option for you, I think it makes a little bit more sense to still keep some of that openness. Changing your entire floor plan is expensive, it's time consuming. We might not have all the materials because we're still having those supply chain issues. So just having a little bit more idea of what these sections are and making sure they really do stand alone can help you have a little bit more of that kind of closed concept, even if you're still open. So make sure your areas are sectioned off. Maybe that's with rugs, really designating those separate areas. And you wanna make sure you are choosing the right rug size there, just to make sure that everything is very cohesive in your living room versus your dining room versus your kitchen something to help just kind of break up that very long flow. This can be done with console tables. It can be done with lamps, plants, so many different things you can do to really kind of section it off so that they do feel a little bit more on their own. 
it's just gonna help a little bit with understanding that maybe we don't wanna close everything off quite again, but we do wanna section off our life in the home a little bit more. You can do something like these beautiful wood panels on the wall that kind of help divide a little bit. You can get room dividers as well if that's a look that you like. It's not something personally for me, but if that's something you like to do to help again, kind of close off that space, you can get something like a bookshelf, something that still has a little bit of spacing in between. That way you have some decor, you can decorate inside those open spaces. But again, it provides that little bit of a divider. Now, all of this speaks to a little bit more of, again, a, a throwback to the more traditional roots. And that's something else that's coming back is the traditional style of decor. So maybe that's something that you've held on to this whole time. And it's kind of, trends are kind of funny because if you hold on to something long enough, it kind of comes back in style. So maybe you've hidden those away in different rooms. Maybe that has gone into the basement or into storage. You can start bringing those back. People are starting to want that kind of homey coziness again, which also brings us into maximalism is coming back. Minimalism has been just everywhere so much these past couple years, and people are getting a little bit tired of it. A lot of times the trends that you see are kind of opposed to the trends that were there before. So it just kind of bounces back and forth along the spectrum as people tire of what's been in and they want to gravitate towards something new. It's generally never really new. It's just kind of, again, bouncing from one end to the other, having some of that time in between, just in response to what we've been seeing and we're maybe a little bit tired of seeing. Now, I am not a fan of maximalism. I think it is way too overwhelming. It's way too colorful. It's just, it seems a little bit messy to me. I'm still very much trying to be more minimalistic, but I also think that true minimalism, I don't think a lot of people are you know, true minimalists to begin with. So I think that there is a lot of middle ground here that maybe we're kind of bypassing, but minimalism in its truest essence I don't think is practical and I totally get why people are, you know, they look beautiful in these Instagram pictures, but in reality, we have things, we have stuff and there's nothing wrong with that. So I get that having these very sparse, you know, again, gorgeous in pictures, but not <laughs> grounded in reality type spaces, not something we really want anymore. And we want to have our things that we love that make us happy out and about. And I totally get that. And I think there's a lot of middle ground here to play with. So I've talked a lot about how I'm like transitioning towards minimalism because I was more in the, not maximalist, just kind of cluttered and crazy kind of space, just not having a style kind of space. So pairing that down to things that are more functional is something that I'm still going to look into, but it was never going to be that true minimalism because again, it's not practical. I live here and I want to feel like I do. I don't want it to feel like I'm staging something. I don't want it to feel like I can't relax and put my feet up on the coffee table because I do that. And you probably do too. And it's your home and you should be comfortable with it. That being said, maximalism can be very beautiful. It definitely has its place. If you love it, then you should go for it and have your items out on display. Maybe it is from travel. Maybe you just really love books and you want you know bookshelves everywhere. Maybe it is those kind of tchotchkes and little trinkets. Maybe it's more about color and pattern and texture and you want that everywhere. Again, maximalism is coming back. 2022 is going to be your year there. So start adding that in. It can be, again, a little bit more at first if you were more in that minimal kind of lifestyle. Just add in some meaningful things. I don't like things for the sake of things. I say as I have weird sculptural stuff behind me, but I like that, so I'm gonna keep it. But I would just suggest not going for all of the things right away. There's again, that nice middle ground transition period that I would personally love to see most people kind of settle into. And finally, we've seen a lot of lime wash coming back. So lime wash is that kind of paint style here. It kind of looks like sponge paint. Do you remember that too from like the late 90s? Maybe it was early 2000s. Sponge paint was all the rage. So it's kind of, to me, looks like a more grown up version of that. It can be very beautiful, so I don't want it to sound like I'm just hating on it, but I think it's also something that can go a little bit too far. So if you are looking at this lime wash and you love it, same thing with that green paint. Start somewhere a little bit smaller. Maybe it's in that powder room. Maybe it's in your dining room or in your bedroom. Start small, see if you like it, 
and then you can expand from there. I've seen some houses, house tours, where it's everywhere and it is a little, again, in my opinion, overwhelming. It feels like it's closing the space in a little bit because it just leads to this kind of like dark and moody, which is great if that's something you like, but to have that everywhere, I think is going to get old very fast. So again, you can definitely participate in this trend, start small, see if you like it, and then it's not as difficult to cover up later if you don't like it anymore, or again, maybe a couple years down the road, you still have it and you love it, expand it. So these are the things you're going to start seeing this year in 2022. If there's something that you see that you love, I'd love to hear about it, or maybe it's something that you have done in the past and you're like, never again, you cannot convince me otherwise. Let's start that conversation too. I hope you did find something useful today. If you did, go ahead, like, subscribe, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until next time. Bye.